26th season. The Professional Bowlers Tour. This afternoon, we've returned to the San Francisco Bay Area for the $150,000 AC Delco Classic. Let's meet today's finalist in fifth position, George Brenham III. He won his first PBA title this past November. The senior member of today's field is 47-year-old Jimmy Certain, who's looking for his first individual title. In third place, the only left-hander in the finals, Mike Albee, the 1985 Player of the Year. In 1983, Norm Duke became the youngest player to win a PBA title at the age of 18. He's looking for his second championship at age 22. And our tournament leader, 28-year-old Steve Wonderlich from St. Louis, Missouri. He won his first title last season at a doubles tournament. That's our field for the AC Delco Classic. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, by automobile, we're about 45 minutes from San Francisco, California for the $150,000 AC Delco Classic. It's the sixth year for this great championship. And I say hello to all of you from Union Square Lanes. My name is Chris Shankel. The winner today will get $27,000. Speaking of winners, there's one I know in the audience. He's from Hamlin, West Virginia. He's the man made of the right stuff, General Chuck Yeager. Chuck, we're glad to have you back with us. There he is. Okay. We start the afternoon here on ABC. We get it off winging because following us will be ABC's Wide World of Sports, which will feature today the grueling, the testing, Ironman Triathlon World Championship. But right now, it's bowling live. Live with us as he is always from St. Louis, Missouri, starting his 13th year on our telecast, Nelson Burton Jr. Bell. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. What about the field? Great field today, Chris, and I feel today's field represents the new breed on the professional bowlers tour. The young lions are starting to take over the PBA tour, representing or replacing some of the veterans. These players are experienced. They've spent some time on the tour. They're disciplined, they're well-trained, and they're ready to win. And the key to winning today is twofold. Number one, the players must keep the ball in play. This tournament, the AC Delco Classic, historically is lost, not won. And by that I mean players usually beat themselves on this championship pair. What a player must do is keep the ball in the pocket, not get the tough spares to open the door for his opponent. And number two, he must be prepared to strike in the clutch. We're going to have some close matches today, and Chris, the winner, as we're ready to go, will be the player who can perform in the clutch. Thank you very much, Bo. We're ready, and so are the two bowlers. Taking his seat, Jimmy Certain, originally from Huntsville, Alabama. Now you're looking at George Branham III, 24-year-old from Arletta, California. Three-year PBA member, has one victory, the 1986 Brunswick Memorial World Open. His mom and dad are watching along with you. They are here, present at the lanes. He is starting uh, here in the finals after a grueling week in the number five position. Opens uh, perfectly on the left lane. And Jimmy Certain, who qualified fourth with a week's average of 213. There you see his size, 5'9", 210. And he is the veteran in the field at 47 years of age. Oldest in the field, but some of these young bowlers, Bo, have as much experience. It's amazing, like Norm Duke. Very true, Chris, but uh, certain could even go in that new breed category. I'll explain why. All right, let's uh, get a profile view of that last shot. As you see the profile of Jimmy Certain, and I relate to him as some of the new breed out on the tour, he took off a number of years and has now resurrected his talent at the age of 47. And you see he has that low profile, that low knee bend, very similar to all five players we have in the championship round today. They're all disciplined and well-taught players. Look at that, years of PBA member. 20, but not always bowling. Now living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Coming up high, almost crossing over. Leaving the sixth pin, which is nudged, but didn't go down. Certain starts the ball to the left of the head pin, almost gets a good break as the three pin goes to the sideboard, knocks out the 10, and leaves a simple spare, the six pin. Now 
Okay, two marks for Jimmy Certain, a strike and a spare. We're in our very first match of the AC Delco Classic Union Square Lanes, Union City, California. The Californian is George Branham III. Looking ready to pounce for that line. George Branham. George Branham, just an ideal style. Five foot, de five step delivery. He's crouched. Notice how his head is just riveted on that target. Shoulders square. Cups the ball in his hand. And a tremendous wrist action. The result on that shot was perfect. He leads by 10, starting the game with two strikes in a row. the 10 pin on the left lane shooting in the third frame of our very first match and if you just joined us to meet the winner of this game the great Mike Albee the left hander the only one in the field followed by Norm Duke of Fort Worth and then Steve Wunderlich of St. Louis ran him across lane for the 10 pin to maintain a 9 pin lead As always, a standing room only crowd here at the Union Square Lanes. Jimmy Certain was on the tour in the late 60s, and uh, for a number of years, Chris, he flew with me when I owned an airplane, and I used to drop him off in Huntsville, Alabama, and was really a power player at that time, and since has changed his game to be what we call a tweener. He still has the power, but he keeps it under control, not as much hook. I really believe he's better now at the age of 47 than when he was in his 20s. Living at 245, this man originally from Alabama who is making his 10th television appearance. Certain coming in light, head pin to the sideboard, leaves the two, four, and five pins. The key here is to get the ball directly between the four and fives to avoid the chop, driving the all three pins straight back. Nicely done. Neither bowler uh, wasting any time here in our first match. Progress through the third and shooting the fourth frame will be Jimmy Certain. Nice sense of humor, Bo. He's he's a delight to be around. Fun. Jesse is one of the best liked players out here on the PBA tour. The championship here this week, 33 and 34 of a 40 lane bowling center union plaza here. It is wood lanes uh, as opposed to the synthetics we had last week into the US Open in Tacoma. Last night in the tenth frame, he doubled to go past Ron Williams and get a spot on our telecast. We'll be back with more after this. When I'm flying at real low altitude, the last thing I need is trouble. This Indy Pace car is all stock from the ground up, and AC Delco parts help make it perform. Parts that keep this car running right, and your car too. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. Stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco parts. Green Bay, Wisconsin, 20 below. The last place you'd want to be with a cold, unless you're the Green Bay Packer backers. So we asked them to try Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. That stuff just cleared off my head. Should have found it a long time ago. Got rid of my aches and pain. Straight up my runny nose. At Alka-Seltzer Plus, that's all I ever needed. Eight of every ten packer backers who tried it switched to Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. Kellogg's Clearing Flakes is my favorite cereal. I love them a lot. It's not fancy, it's just really good. It's just like a, a breath of fresh air early in the morning. It's crunchy and it just gets me going. <laughs> you pour the Kellogg's Corn Flakes, put some milk on it, some fresh fruit, you got a perfect breakfast. Kellogg's Corn Flakes means bringing my baby up the right way, the healthy way. And I love them this much. Corn Flakes from Kellogg's. What more could you want from a cereal? The general manager, general sales manager of AC Delco, Art Schwarzel, has brought a group of AC Delco executives here 
to see another of their classic events. We do miss, however, the head, head man, Archie Long, who's back in Detroit, minding the store. George Branham, 12th in lead, fourth frame. Beautiful. George had to go through quite a field to win the uh, Memorial World Open in Chicago. Steve Winterlich first, Ryan Schaefer, and then the top seed, Mark Roth. There you see the first breakdown. 27,000, 14 for runner-up, 8,500, 7,000. And the loser of this first game you're watching now will uh, get the $6,000 fifth place prize and increase it to 22. Disappointed, George Branham watched the balls, and there's the 1-3 pocket. Normally a ball will hit the 5, deflect into the 9, but watch, with the power of George's urethane bowling ball on that shot, he drives the 5-pin straight off the 8-pin, and he leaves a solid tap, one of the few real taps in professional bowling. So with three strikes and two spares, he continues to lead by 12, but Jimmy Certain now with a strike up has a chance to cut Branham's lead to two pins. The experience of certain. Let's see if he can jump on the misfortunes of George Branham the thirds and capitalize on that strike he has up in the fourth frame to cut the lead down to just two pins. stay up. A certain comes in light for the second consecutive time on the right-hand lane here. He drives the head pin to the sideboard, and it knocks out the two, four, and five pins. Now, as you see the ball rolling through there, watch the head pin. It goes to the left sideboard, comes back across, knocks out the four and five, and almost knocks the two pin forward, which would have been a double. Now, what has happened right now, we have a delay. The machine or pin setter did not pick up the, the pin, and so it has to be replaced right on the same spot and certain is ready to go to convert the spare. He would still trail by 12 pins through five frames. The human element, sooner or later, will always prevail with machinery, won't it? <laughs> All right, even though he had to wait, with a great deal of confidence and experience, moves to the line, marks for the spare in the fifth. Jimmy, experienced player, as we said, started in the tour in the mid-1960s. And I remember, Chris, when he first came out, he was one of the few power players in the 60s when we had lacquer lane surfaces uh, as opposed to the urethane lane surfaces we had today. He didn't need all that power, so certain was kind of a man ahead of his times. As you see his grip, the stretched fingertip grip where the fingers are inserted down to just the first knuckle. He buries his thumb. He's ready for the sixth frame. Beautifully done. And Branham is up and ready. Branham with a spare up. Let's check Jimmy's release. Powerful in the upper body, Jimmy Certain. He rolls that wrist down underneath the ball, lets it snap through the shot. He sends it wide. As he said, as we said, you do not want to beat yourself on this championship pair. So far, Certain has stayed in the match. Branham, although, leads by 12 pins, six frame. It's a four pin for Brenham. Great concentration. Notice how Brenham's eyes are just riveted on that target right around the second arrow. He watches the ball well past the second arrow. Head pin goes to the sideboard, drives the two to the sideboard, and does not quite take out the four. We're at the AC Delco Classic. We started out our uh, tour of 16 cities last week in Tacoma with a record-breaking purse of a half million dollars and a hundred thousand dollars to the winner named Del Ballard of Richardson, Texas. He didn't bowl this week because he had a sore wrist, but he'll be back next week. But his roommate, Mike Edwards, did cash, made about $1,250. George Branham, just like Jimmy Certain, the fingertip grip urethane bowling ball. Go 
George Burnham and Jimmy Certain in our first match, two of the field of 160 that started earlier in the week. We'll be back with more after this. Now, I, I just turned around for half a second and boom, the whole thing went up. <laughs> Hottest day in the summer, we end up loading that sucker twice. Oh, yeah. Hey, you remember looking old man Donovan's face? <laughs> After that, I never thought he'd bring out that kick like that. That was a good draft. Oh, I remember that beer. Drinking Miller Genuine Draft will remind you of the best beer you've ever had. Because it is genuine draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. Hey, how come Donovan never asked us back? Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card. And everybody's a winner. You could win a free MasterCare tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. You will swim, you will bike, you will run, and you will experience the grueling Ironman Triathlon World Championship next. George Branham III is meeting Jimmy Certain in our first match of the AC Dalco Classic in Union City, California, our second stop on the Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. Jimmy Certain trailing by 11, shooting now in the seventh frame can cut it to one if he can double right here on the right lane of our championship pair. Well, Bo, he put that one out on the lane, didn't he? You're right, Chris. A critical shot because Jimmy had really struggled on these right-hand lane, and at the opportune time, he closes the match down to just one pin. Watch the loft. He gets out over the foul line. He told me that's the key to making his ball roll true today. Lift the ball out about three feet over the foul line. That way it doesn't do any tricks in the early part of the lane and rolls very true in the back end. He surely made a great shot there, and now he has an opportunity for the first time today to take the lead. Trails by one. One more strike would give him a nine pin lead, eighth frame. And is served up with the bucket on the left lane. Two, four, five, eight. That shot in the eighth frame. The light hit. Jimmy leaves the two, four, five, seven, two, four, five at eight pins. He has come up with the first difficult shot of the day for any of the players. The key is to carry the back pin without chopping the two pin off the five. Needs this spare to trail by just five pins. Ooh! Speed to spare for Jimmy Certain on that shot. Well, continues to mark. And now with a... Here you see him covering the bucket. Now Branham is up on the right line. Strike working in the seventh. Beautiful shot. Though at the very last moment, it just bent into that pocket. George has more power than any of the other four players in the championship round today, and he has controlled that power so well through eight frames. The scoreboard really doesn't tell the whole story. George, leading by 15, can extend to 25. Has bowled just a brilliant game so far, and he can really put the pressure on the veteran Jimmy Certain with another strike here in the ninth. Then on the left lane for Branham. George Branham doesn't quite have the ball finish as you see the second pin on the right hand part of your screen lay down in the channel. Tries to pop out the 10 pin, but not to be. George, if he didn't have bad luck this game, he'd have had no luck at all. He's bowled a great game so far. A little body English of the line, who's and ahs from the crowd because he nearly missed the 10 pin. This is how close he came. Well, 
bring it. That'll bring about maturity early. A Boeing lane is 42 inches wide, and George used every bit of it. Now for Jimmy Certain. He came up in the seventh frame, adjusted to this right-hand lane, made a great shot to close the match, down to just five pins. He had an errant shot in the eighth. He still has a chance to win the match. Trails by 14 pins. Jimmy, a possible 223 game. Right now, George Branham with strike spare in the 10th would have 217. It's up for grabs. Two, four, five. Certain's undoing so far has been the right-hand lane. He's been light on every shot except in the third frame. And so he now trails with a spare by 17 pins. He still can win the match, but he must convert this spare. Chops a tune, four off the five. First open frame of this first game now trails by 28. Jimmy, with that extra speed, he hopes to avoid the chop, but not to be. The ball breaks just a pinch as the ball enters the two-pin area, chops a two-four off the five. He has dug himself a tremendous hole. The best he can finish is 199. He definitely has his back to the wall. Big disappointment for Jimmy. Last frame, previous frame. Well, Jimmy told me he's to tell the audience today and all his fans around the country that uh, regardless of how he does today, that the fire is turned down a little bit, but the pilot light is still burning. That's what he said. So he'll be back regardless of whether he wins this match or not. He's really in trouble. He needs this strike to have any chance. some pinfall uh, other than the two competing in the first game that's Mike Albee the great left-hander who will meet the winner of our first match practicing off to the right well he struck out an attempt last night to get into the television finals so he pats Branham on the back George is up 199 for certain. Certain just had, uh, Branham just has to keep the ball in the building, stay behind the foul line. He'll go on to meet Mike Albee in the second match. There's a winner. George Branham of Aletta, California, 23 years younger than Jimmy Certain, has won her first match, and now he will meet Mike Albee. BBA National Champion twice. We'll be back. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by AC Delco. Stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco Parks. By Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. And by Ebonite International, where advanced technology has striking results. The Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. This can happen to good bowlers on lanes with limited distance dressing or short oil. Short oil means oil out to here, 26 feet or less from the foul line. Short oil can make your ball react unpredictably, a big problem. Now, the solution from Ebonite, the new Firebolt SO, a urethane ball with a unique additive. To make it roll long, hit hard, and not overreact on today's short oil conditions. Ebonite's new Firebolt SO is the solution to the problems of short oil. Oh. Just like that, this AC Copper Core spark plug can fire 30 times. That's the firepower today's high revving car engines need. What about your plugs? If they can't fire for up to 30,000 miles, oh! Maybe you're missing out on peak performance. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. Wait for trouble, and you've got it. On the Disney Sunday movie, it's a magical musical night of the very best from the Disney drawing boards. Carol Burnett hosts great moments in Disney animation. I have no doubt. We challenged Michael and Jackson of these piles of cottons, each done in a different liquid fabric softener, which was done in hers. They all feel soft. 
But this is my fabric softener because it's very bright and very white. I was right! <laughs> it's final touch. I like my white to be really bright and light and, and pure, like snow. Only final touch gives you a soft, whiter wash. Softness plus whiter and brighter clothes. Let's talk about what made this country great. How about American ingenuity, engineering, and the foresight to build the most inexpensive car built in America by Americans. Introducing the 1987 Plymouth Horizon America. And the good news, base price, $54.99. Better news than that, $119 a month with no money down. At Harrisburg East Chrysler Plymouth, right across the way from the East Mall. Watch the Oprah Winfrey Show weekdays at 4 on WHTM. <laughs> February 1st, 1969, just a few miles down the road from Union City, Johnny Gunther had a perfect afternoon in the San Jose Open. This strike capped a perfect game for Gunther, who went on to win two more matches in the championship that afternoon. Johnny, a member of the Bowling Hall of Fame, set a record that day for a total score in a television final. On that perfect afternoon, Johnny Gunther defeated Buzz Fazio, Don Johnson, Billy Hardwick, and in the championship game, Wayne Zahn. All five bowlers are now members of Bowling's Hall of Fame. George Brenham with six strikes, total score 217, has uh, defeated Jimmy Certain in our first match, who shot a 199. Mike Albee steps in as Branham's next opponent, 26-year-old from Indianapolis, a great champion, bowler of the year. George will be shooting first on the left lane. Dancing off the deck, strike on the left lane of this championship pair. Now here's Mike Albee who set a record pace in 1981, winning over $201,000. He started his victory skein in the AC Dalco Classic in 1985. He used to say he'd like to get going again after a $77,000 year in 1986. There you see the number of titles, 13, nine years a PBA member. Seven pin profile look at Mike Albee. The style that has dominated the tour in 1985 produced 77,000 in 1986. Mike Albee, medium high arm swing, very smooth delivery, low profile at the line, very confident player, and that's one of the keys to professional bowling. Once you get that confidence, just stay relaxed out there, and that's the best way to get the best results. Albee has done it so well in the last few years. Mike Albee. Albee much improved in his spare making. Uh, as you notice, he picked that seven pin with a what we call a low revolution ball. He kills the ball, keeps it in play, and uh, he learned his lesson in Paris in 1982 where he missed the seven pin twice in the championship game to give the title away. Has much improved on all his facets of his game. Definitely one of the top players in the world today. strike in the second frame of our second game. We're the first of the usual Saturday two-part afternoon. Yes, following us, ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Ironman Triathlon World Championship. Imagine if you'll feel the emotion of a 2.4 mile swimming event followed by a 112 mile bike race and then finishing by running a full-fledged marathon. Ironman 140 miles in a day. Here's Branham. And Branham has doubled. Did that in the first game and then totaled only six strikes in his 217 victory over Jimmy Certain, who shot a 199. Certain pick up a check for $6,000.
the stoic George Branham just butchering these opponents so far. He has only made one slight mistake. That was a right hit in the first match against Jimmy Certain. He's been perfect through two frames against the very tough Albi. Third frame. Mike Albee is up. He opened with a spare. Mark to the strike now shooting in the third. The young man that won six events in 1985. His name PBA uh, Sporting News Player of the Year. Earlier, he was Rookie of the Year. the six pin. Albee with uh, just a little cut back on his speed in the previous shot. He left a solid seven in the first frame on the left hand lane. Slowed up a little bit more just so he could carry the seven and went high left the six pin. Very simple spare for a talented player like Mike Albee as his wife Tammy Albee looks on. Travels with Mike on the professional bowlers tour. Uh, Mike's in-laws are here as well. Tammy's parents, Polly and John Canepa. Mike, as we said, a very confident player and uh, not only has a great ability, but when his confidence is high like it is right now, I asked him, he says, I feel so great right now, Bo, and he feels he can win at any time, so trailing by 20 pins, even though Branham looks almost unbeatable at this point, is not much of a hill for a great player like Albee to climb. Fourth frame. Strike in the fourth for Mike Albee. Albee and Branham battling in our second match. We'll return to California after this. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car-carrying people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. Oh, fellas. Look here, fellas. Let's do one for Mr. Seagram. Now, look here, Mr. Seagram. You sound like my kind of guy, yay. You make that? Seagram's golden wine cooler. And you make it wet and dry. Oh, now, Mr. Seagram. You're my kind of guy, huh? My kind of guy, huh? Mark it down. Next stop, the $175,000 Showboat Invitational on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday. George Branham III has jumped out to a 40-pin lead by virtue of strikes in the fourth and fifth. Here is his strike in the fifth frame as we had to bowl through because we're running behind. A lot of spares in the first match, uh, rather slow play. Thus, you missed his last two strikes, and so now he has five in a row. Now with a strike up, Mike Albee, fifth frame. Do not count Mike Albee out. No matter what his opponent is doing, Albee will stay and hang in the match. Branham looks just unbeatable in his first 15 frames against certain he bowled just a brilliant 217 game. He's off to a hot start with three five strikes in a row this match. And he's got a tiger by the tail. Once you are a player that no longer doubts his ability, as Mike Albee is, he's a you become a great player. And with that in his mind, he will never give up. The lead of Branham's can be cut to just 20 pins with a third strike in a row here. Six frames. three in a row for Mike, but for the man getting up now, George Brennan, he has five in a row. He'll be shooting in the sixth frame. What a disciplined shot by Albee under the pressure. Drives the head pin to the sideboard, wipes out the three, five, six, and nine. 
boom. He has put the pressure back on Branham. Branham five in a row, Albee has three in a row, just 20 pins difference through five frames. So now with six more, George Branham, if he can do that, will win $100,000 from True Value Hardware as his fiance. Uh, looks on here in California, Patty Cummings. George's parents here watching as well. George Branham, red hot. <laughs> String ending at six, leaving a 10 pin, much appreciated by the fans here. A bowler named Dave Arnold bowled two 300 games in the same day, Nelson, during this competition. Solid 10-pin, as, as you alluded to, Chris. The uh, Branham has kept the ball in the pocket. Arnold bowled two perfect games yesterday, and the third 300 in this tournament was bowled by Staybrook in the early going. All right. Six strikes and a spare for George Branham, who leads by 29. We'll be back. ASU, AC Delco Classic. Why is my antacid Tums? Tums is effective. It neutralizes one-third more stomach acid than the other leading brand. And Tums is rich in calcium. To me, that's extra good news. Your resume is fine, but the interview's on the line, cause... I feel a cold sore coming on. Campofanique Cold Sore Gel works on developing cold sores to help speed healing. Campofanique Gel helps stop cold sores from stopping you. My dandruff shampoo is good. Maybe you should try something else. My dandruff shampoo really works. Maybe you should try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors and pharmacists recommend Selsun Blue more than all other leading brands combined. What that means to you is no leading brand gets rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. It's number one. And like all Selsun Blue formulas, new extra medicated Selsun Blue is for serious dandruff, with the ingredient recommended most by doctors. While we were away, this man bowled his fourth strike in a row, hitting his last in the seventh frame. Now he's in the left lane, eighth frame. Mike Albee. Five in a row. Cutting that lead now to nine pins. What a match in our second game. Albee used to use a 15-pound bowling ball, and he thought he could conquer the tour with that weight ball instead of the maximum 16. He would have never carried a strike like that with a 15-pound ball. He's, that closes the match down. He has put the pressure on, it seems, a person who is imperceptible to pressure. George Branham III has every ball solid in the pocket. Six strikes, one spare. Just a nine-pin difference in the match. Three frames left. So after the spare breaking his string at six, it's a strike in the eighth for... George Branham the third. Patty Cummings, George's fiance. Mighty tense. Winner here today will receive twenty-seven thousand dollars. Both these players are products of the junior program across the country. Mike Albee from the Indiana area. George Branham from California. Both head to head. Very tough match. It's up for grabs. Colby. Branham hits light, saws the five into the, into the seven pin and just slices that six pin out as it takes the ten. Watch his eyes as he reacts. The two men remaining in our championship finals here, uh, the tournament leader Steve Wunderlich and the next man to bowl, Norman Duke of Fort Worth. They uh, got up off the set tees and started practicing a little harder after seeing this game. Head to head, one against one. Beauty of our format. Albee in a very crucial spot. He needs one more strike. Oh, 
Nine years, 13 championships, including two PBA Nationals, Player of the Year. Some of the reasons why. He has amassed a, a tremendous record in that short a period of time. Chris, this is the highest scoring best match I can recall since 1975-76 in St. Louis when Larry Lobb and Tim Harahan went at a 280 to 270. Lobb winning that match. Right now, Branham has a possible 279, albeit a possible 270. The match is up for grabs, 10th frame. We've seen 15 strikes thus far in this game. Make it 16. And now Mike Albee has taken the lead by one pin. The Hoosier, a 40-pin deficit as he entered the fifth frame, has closed that margin down to where he has a one-pin lead. He drives the head pin to the sideboard. Now he can take an 11-pin lead, but he cannot shut out George Branham. There is a strong possibility of a tie match also. And should that happen, it'll be a two-frame roll-off. Six on the left lane for the left-hander. Albee, the 356 with a spare conversion would end up with 257. What that would force George Branham to do is get a count of at least 19. That would be nine on the first ball, spare strike, or a strike on the first ball to win the match. If Branham would get a combination of 18, after Albee would convert the spare, we would have a tie. Fifty-seven for Mike Albee. Now, Branham will run the first match over Jimmy Certain, 217 to 199, strung six, marked with a spare, and a strike in eight and nine, now shooting in the tenth frame. This is the ultimate athletic moment for a professional bowler. He must perform right now. The game is in the balance. What a competitor. George Branham with this strike. Life in the fast lane of the professional bowlers tour, George Branham. Every ball right in the pocket. He started with six strikes in a row. Solid 10 pin in the seventh frame and very coolly stood up there in the eighth, ninth, and when it really counted, buried the ball in the tenth to put Mike Albee down into fourth position, and he will go right now against Norm Duke. And a seven pin on the right lane, shooting a 268 and winning his second game. 268 to 257. Hope you enjoyed that match. Norm Duke is Branham's next opponent. He is from Fort Worth, Texas, and tough. Norman Duke, George Brandon next on the Professional Bowlers Tour Telecast. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice Deodorant and Antiperspirant Deodorant. We give 24-hour protection. In lesson number one, we showed you how to find your proper starting position on the approach. Four and a half steps from the foul line, the half a step to accommodate your slide. Then put the ball in the palm of your right hand, balancing the weight with the left. Hold it in a comfortable position for you, whether it be up high like this, in the middle like I like it, or down low like Carmen Salvino or Wayne Webb. Whichever is comfortable for you, by all means use that. And now today the approach. The most important step is the first step. You initiate your approach by taking your first step out and pushing the ball all the way out as you complete that first step. Remember, out on one. Release the left hand. Keep the arm close to your body. Have it down on two. The third step, the power step, back on three. Your ball's at the apex of your swing. Your right knee's bent. Your right foot is poised to drive through the shot. Step four is a step and a slide. Keep your arm close to your body. Bend that left leg. Rotate that wrist around the ball as you release it. The fingers go around and follow through towards the target. 
Remember today's lesson. Out on one, down on two, back on three, release extension and follow through on four. Next week, lesson number three is a critical part of bowling, how to find your strike line day after day. Once guys try the 24-hour protection of Old Spice Solid, they may give up their usual antiperspirant mid-stick. Your dad, <clears throat> only used twice. Very short strokes. Fact is, none of these solid antiperspirants help stop wetness as well as Old Spice Solid. These deodorant sprays can't block odor better than Old Spice Stick. So switch now. Sarge, for you. Hardly used. Kind of like your comb. <laughs> switch to 24-hour Old Spice. Antiperspirant or deodorant. I'm Keith Jackson. I'm Dick Vitale. LSU meets Kentucky. Plus Louisville at Purdue. College basketball premieres with doubleheader action. Watch out, Billy and Al. A new kid is on the block. Tomorrow on ABC Sports. Back again in California, our second stop in the tour of 16 cities, 26 year, the Professional Bowlers Tour. A tremendous match. Second best in the history of our PBT telecasts. George Branham the third, second win today, 268 to Mike Albee's 257. And as we see the size of the field, it is incorrect there. It should be 160 man field. The average score, of course, 201 to cash for everybody, 208 to make the top 24. And here's some of the other players that cashed in our championship field, as you see the Bay Bridge boy, a left-hander, Stay Brook, Dave Arnold, two 300 games, Scott Devers, Ron Williams from the St. Louis area, Coke, Illinois, Purvis Granger, Bill Ryan Jr., two weeks in a row, Chuck McGavro looking good, veteran Dave Davis, Dave Ferraro, a new champ in there, Mark Williams, who won the last tournament last year, John Mazza says hi to his mom, Gary Dickinson, veteran Hutchinson up there, lefty Hugh Miller, Del Warren, Tom Baker, Dale Eagle says hi to his daughter Shauna and Tamara and his son Brandon. Toby Contreras, a former AC Delco champion. And Doug Wallace round out the top 24. We paid 53 places this week. $940 went to the final spot, the great Palmer Falgren. All right, and next week we move to Las Vegas, Nevada for the $175,000 Showboat Invitational. Gary Skidmore will defend his title against United States Open champion Del Ballard. Mark Roth, and a host of others, Nelson Burton, Jr., Earl Anthony, who finished 39th here in this tournament this week. And here's the man that finished second. Tough little competitor at 5'5", 125 pounds, Norm Duke. These last three players left, Duke, Branham, and Wonderlake, are bowling as well as I've any, seen any young players in recent years, Chris. Imagine that he won his first tournament at 18 years of age. He's now 22. Looking for his third title. Branham has won two matches looking for his second title. Look at his average today. 242.5. Interesting to see if he could sustain that pace. He's just been phenomenal. Every ball but one in the pocket in the first two games. Ten pin on the right lane. He had uh, six strikes in his 217 victory over Jimmy Certain at 199. Nine strikes against Mike Albee. 268, 257. Albee had eight strikes. And Branham the third, 68% pocket percentage for first two games, 15 strikes and 22 attempts. Starts off with a ten pin. And the winner of this. Uh, our next to last match will meet the tournament leader, Steve Wunderlich of St. Louis, Missouri. Young man with a lot of talent. Interesting story on our tournament leader also, Chris. He had his bowling ball stolen last night from the bowling center. He will be going with a backup ball that he just found, so it'll be interesting to see how he handles that championship match against one of these two players in the semifinal. Who wins the semifinal? It's a seven pin on the left lane. Branham just slightly light in the pocket in his first two shots here in the semifinal match. The ball drives the head pin to the sideboard. It takes out the two, four, and five, but leaves the seven pin. And in these lane conditions here today, you have to watch for the lane sometimes getting a little slicker or tightening up, as we call it, as some of the lane conditioner is carried down towards the pocket area. George just needs to reduce his speed slightly. 
George Branham, who defeated Albee 268 to 257, we indicated that was the second best score on the PBT Tour. Mark Baker had a 279, and Dave Ferraro a 278 in the 1985 Austin Open. This young man has gone into a terrific training program for this season. Two, four, five, eight, four. Norm Duke. Throughout this tournament, he was never less than second. Duke, short of stature, but strong on power. Gets a demonstrative push away. The high back swing, similar to what we saw Pete Weber use last week. Low at the line. Has tremendous wrist action. Just throws that ball a little too hard. We use the two, four, five, and eight. The conversion here, he would lead this match by one pin. Duke of Fort Worth could uh, today become the third Texan to win the last three tournaments. Mark Williams of Beaumont winning the last on the 1986 tour. Last week, Del Ballard, and now Norm. Norm, the training program, he told me he was on all the way through December and on into the start of January. It was simply this. He got up in the morning, ran five miles every day, went to the bowling center, practiced approximately three hours, then went to the gymnasium three days a week, worked out on the Nautilus machines. He is ready. Four or seven on the left lane. And he said, uh, Bo, what he wanted to do is build up more leg strength than upper body. He's got a pretty good upper body for a small person. Yes, he does, but the leg strength, as you alluded to, Chris, is the most important in bowling. As you see, a slightly high hit by Norm Bududuk driving the two pin over the four and seven pins. He'll go across lane, approximately the third arrow for a target, driving to drive the four into the seven and let the ball take out both pins. But the leg strength is more important in bowling than the arm strength. All right. Spare in the third, one pin separating these two professionals. And our tournament leader, Steve Wonderlich, warming up off to the right. Next strike coming after two spares. Ideal arm swing. He takes that ball inside, brings it slightly outside his target line. Now watch how he wraps it back in behind his hips, drives right down next to that left leg, keeps that elbow and wrist underneath the ball, and what he did on that shot was just snap that wrist a little bit more to make the ball finish, driving all ten pins in the pit. Great adjustment. He leads the match by one through three frames. That angle, a great picture and audio tip for all you bowlers at home. So George Branham in his third match of the afternoon has doubled. The AC Delco Classic will continue after this. When you want the rich, smooth, fresh taste of real draft beer in a bottle, ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. Kellogg's Clearing Flakes is my favorite cereal. wheel. I love them a lot. It's not fancy. It's just really good. It's just like a, a breath of fresh air early in the morning. It's crunching. It just gets me going. <laughs> you pour the Kellogg's Corn Flakes, put some milk on it, some fresh fruit. You got a perfect breakfast. Kellogg's Corn Flakes means bringing my baby up the right way, the healthy way. And I love them this much. Corn Flakes from Kellogg's. What more could you want from a cereal? When you want the rich, smooth, fresh taste of real draft beer in a can, ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. Norm Duke looking for a double. Fifth frame. I hit, and it's a 6, 7, 10. We bowled through, and while we were away, he uh, marked with a strike in the fourth frame. Now this hit in the fifth. Norm Duke cuts right through the middle of the pins. And if he can slide that six pins, six pin over into the seven pin area, he can convert this split. Has to stand to the extreme left side of the approach. 
send the six pin straight over into the seven, and he would hold his, the deficit down to just 11 pins. Cross-lane shot. Didn't quite pull it off, so it's a 23-pin lead for George Branham, who has a double up. Shooting now in the fifth frame. Branham has just been near perfect so far. If you're just tuning in, he just pulled so sensational his first two matches. Now has Duke on the ropes in the early going, can extend his lead to 33 pins, fifth frame. Remember, six strikes in his first victory, nine in his second. Now he has strung three here in his third game of the afternoon. In this tournament, Chris, in the qualifying, I had the uh, good fortune of bowling next to George all the way through the 18 games, and uh, he bowled the very same way. He just didn't quite have the carry in the early going of the tournament. He was just very diligent about keeping his form together, concentrating, keeping the ball around the pocket, and he has just carried it right into this championship match. He leads by 33. And add 10 more for Branham. Please see the leaders by round, qualifying rounds, and then match play. Qualifying rounds, each of six games, 18 games, a match play consisting of 24 games. Albee, then Wonderly caught him in the fifth and sixth rounds, 42 game total for this week. But now it's just down to three players, two games left. Duke trails by 43 pins, coming up in the sixth. Duke from Texas. A lot of great golfers from that state. We ask him why there's so many good bowlers from Texas. It's an awful big state. Uh, I would have to credit most of the success to the tournament activity they have in Texas. Uh, a player has a chance to win anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 a weekend, uh, most every weekend. So therefore they get a lot of experience bowling for the Bucks, and uh, a, a lot of good players are coming from Texas. I think it's a point well taken. What he meant is there's a lot of handicap tournaments and scratch tournaments uh, organized on a local le level and all the Texas players participate in it. That's the way to stay sharp, always with that ball in your hand. Wanted to cut it to 33, but left a 10 pin. Norm did not need that shot right there. He threw a, apparently a great roll on the ball, left a solid 10 at an inopportune time as he switches to a little bit harder ball to slide it into the 10 pin. But with a conversion through seven frames, he'll trail the very red hot George Branham by 43 pits. All right. The AC Delco Classic. Our sixth. We'll be back. I've been shot at, shot up, and shot down. So I don't take chances on anything. I won't touch a filter that isn't from AC. Why mess with air filters that can't go for up to 30,000 miles? Or oil filters that can't deliver up to 15,000? For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. If you put your muscle into a job, use your head and do it with AC Delco. Why you bother me, boy? Are you crazy? I'm a chicken hawk and you're a chicken. Are you coming quietly or do I have to muss you up? You're going at it all wrong, son. You gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you want to catch America's favorite chicken. It's a great place to get a great meal. No one makes tender, juicy chicken like the Colonel. It's finger licking good. Here, son, let me give you a lift. <laughs> we do chicken right. George, George Branham III has just added two more strikes while we were away to uh, put his string to six here in his third match. Here is his last shot. He just gives his opponent no chance. Puts the pressure on Norm Duke here. Eighth frame to extend to six strikes in a row. A possible 279 for Branham in this game. The best Duke can do is 216. And that figure has just dropped to 203. Norm Duke struggling a little bit, but it's really not his fault. Branham has just been near perfect so far in three matches. 
for the loser of this third game, $8,500. The winner will go into the finals. They bowl for $41,000, 27 to the winner, 14000 to the loser. The defending champion, Randy Peterson, finished 72nd in this year's AC Delco Classic. Duke just finishing out the match has bowled so well all week long. You're going to see a lot more of this young man. He's been on an excellent training program. He's finally come into his own. He has the experience, the determination, and he's going to win a lot of tournaments. And that stroke is just about as smooth as they come. What a delivery by Norm Duke. And what an afternoon for George Branham, leading by 66. Branham, who was seated in the first match, has a chance to go all the way through the field, much like Randy Peterson did here in the AC Delco Classic last year, defeating Dennis Jakes in the championship match. Potential 279, he has six strikes in a row. Unreal. Now leading by 76 and is the winner. The professional bowlers will continue after this message and a word from our local station. Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card. And everybody's a winner. You could win a free Mastercare tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. When it's time to tackle your painting projects, rely on True Test paint and accessories from True Value Hardware Stores. Seal out stains on many surfaces with XO Stain, Primer Sealer, and Stain Killer starting at just $248. And apply it with this three-piece Orel brush set, only $366. Complete the job with True Test Easy Care Latex Flat Finish, just $9.98 a gallon. And for good results, use this seven-piece paint and trim set for only $544 at most True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Tomorrow, it's too fantastic to believe, dare to experience Shirley MacLaine's phenomenal but true story out on a limb. I can tell. You can't fool me. We challenged Eileen Mouché of these piles of cottons, each done in a different liquid fabric softener, which was done in hers. They all feel very soft, but this is my fabric softener because it's white. Oh, I was right. I was right. Final touch. When I see white and bright things on my children, I think, all right, kiddo, you've got it. Only Final Touch gives you a soft, whiter wash. To get them this white, Final Touch. Introducing new Close-Up Lip Balm with protective emollients to keep your lips soft and smooth. A new lip balm that goes pow right on the kisser. New Close-Up Lip Balm in three flavors. Pow right on the kisser. Watch the dating game at its new time. Weeknights at 11.30 on WHDM. With games of 217, 268, and now one even better, 279, George Branham III, a one-time winner, has eliminated Norm Duke, who shot uh, 225 strikes in the three games. He will now meet Steve Wonderlich. All right, let's see um, about Ask Bo. This is the way to find out uh, anything you want to know about bowling. Send uh, your card or letter to Ask Bo, Post Office Box 951, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10019. And now Bo is going to ask a question. Bo? Thank you, Chris. And with me is the anxious wife of our tournament leader, Steve Wonderlich. Cindy, uh, what is going through your mind as Steve goes up against uh, red hot George Branham? Well, I know George is going really well, um, but I think Steve's really hungry for this title. Um, he'd like to be back in the Firestone again. I'd like him to be back in the Firestone again. 
Um, he had um, some rough television shows during the fall tour, and I think he's going to win. This is, this is his show. <laughs> well, it's a good positive attitude. As uh, Cindy alluded to, he lost a very tough match to in Rochester to Tommy Baker. He threw every ball in the pocket. Baker got a somewhat of a lucky strike in the 10th frame. Uh, how about the money? Does that make any difference? Oh, the money helps. Uh, we, had, we found out about some financial obligations this week, so any paycheck this week is going to help. So uh, I'm really excited, and I've got a very positive attitude, and I hope Steve does too. Well, I think, Cindy, and I know Steve very well and this young lady, that uh, for Steve Wonderlich, 27000 that's fine, and for Cindy Wonderlich. But I think knowing this young man, how good he is bowling, he's bowling as well as anybody in the country right now, I think the the victory itself is actually more important than money. I, t I think that's the case this time. Um, I really would like to see him win and go for it. <laughs> All right, Cindy, good luck. Good luck to Steve Wonderlich. George Branham's a tough opponent. Chris, they're ready to go. All right, and just before they start, reminding you that next on ABC, Wide World of Sports, featuring the Ironman Triathlon World Championship, ruling what an endurance event. And the viewers are going to get an added treat because of micro-camera technology. Seemingly, you'll be right there with them. That's coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. What an afternoon for George Branham III. Three victories. And he's been slaughtering those ten pins. His opponent is the tournament leader from St. Louis, Steve Wunderlich. Another practice shot for Wunderlich. Wonderlick, the tournament leader, has allowed 10 practice balls before the championship match, and there was not a good omen on that shot. He crossed over the left side of the head pin, and really, I don't see where he can have any room for, mis for error against Branham as well as he's bowling. Uh, for Wonderlick, he has uh, one thing going for him, and that's uh, he has a probably a slightly negative attitude. Everything has gone bad for him. He's due to have something go good for him in a championship round. Here's the first shot for our tournament leader. Last year, winning the champion or reaching the championship round four times without winning. Just needed to break there. Pin coming over to get the ten, but it did not. Watch the action of the head pin. It'll go to the sideboard over the left side. Now watch it as it bounces back across the lane as a, what we call a messenger shot. Doesn't quite have enough impetus to knock out the 10 pin, but a good opening shot for Wonderlic. Like, keep the ball in play. Matches are not won in the first few frames. They're won in the ninth and 10th frames. So it's despair for the tournament leader, Wonderlic. Norm Duke, who was defeated by this man, George Branham, 279 to 200, picked up a check for 8,500. There you see his performance today. Branham averaging 254 for this first three games coming into the championship match. Precision, perfection, frame number one for George Branham. Well, I said there's a new breed on the tour. Look at the discipline of this young man, the physical, obvious physical conditioning to maintain this pace, and the concentration shows tremendous experience at such a tender age of 24. strike he has strung 12 in two games of course 12 mm. consecutive strikes he finished his third game with 10 in a row and started this match with two in a row the old timers would have called that an Andy Verapapa 300 there's an old saying that Andy had 400 300 games and everybody used to chide him about counting all of just 12 strikes in a row and not all in one game and if ever Steve needed one it was right there Strike in the second frame. Here's a man who is a great athlete in all sports, but has really found his niche in professional bowling, and he has worked at it. Look at that profile. Every step calculated. Terrific follow-through. Look at the snap and revolutions his wrist is giving that bowling ball as he drives all ten pins in a pit. Oh, and what a student of bass fishing. Small mouth and large mouth. In fact, he told me our river back home, the Tippecanoe, which runs through the farm, Oh, that's a great area for smallmouth bass. He lives in Missouri. Oh, oh no. 
a little bit discouraged with that shot, but matches are not won early in the match. What has happened to Wonderlic, he sent the ball wide. It broke very sharply through the pocket. What he has to do is just take either this side of the pins, the 6-10 area, or the 4-7, and try to just bounce the pins back out in and convert this split. He must go for it in a championship game. Not to be. Steve, uh, seem in a big hurry for that one, but can he come back? Branham opened with a double. Third frame. Twenty-seven strikes today. George Branham III, not the first black bowler to jump into the spotlight on the professional bowlers tour. The late J. Wilbur Sims from Chicago performed before national television audiences on ABC in the 60s. And probably the toughest black of bowler that I had ever bowled, one of the great match play players of all times, the late B.J. Harris from St. Louis. Chris, so George is just carrying on a tremendous tradition. George, who backs himself on the tour, winner of regional titles, one PBA title, now shooting for his second. We'll be back. Guess what thousands of doctors are recommending for women who need extra calcium? Tums. Surprised? It's true. Tums isn't just a great antacid, it's also rich in calcium. Tums, tums, tums. I get caught out in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery, but I won't. This is a Delco maintenance free battery, and when this green eye is showing, it means I've got all the starting power I need, up to 770 cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1 800 AC Delco. Never wait for trouble. The Fuller family finished four fried foods, and this is the fullest the Fullers have ever felt. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Alka-Seltzer fixes your acid indigestion and headache in a flash. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Charming lady, Cindy Wonderlich. Her husband, Steve, up in the approach now. And up against George Branham III, who has strung four. After an open, fourth frame for Steve. High hit, 6-10. Steve just not getting the ball reaction that he wants. And Chris, he was the tournament leader going away last night. And when we walked in the bowling center today, he found that four of his bowling balls were stolen during the evening. One of them was the one he used to lead the tournament. They were never found. He's had to pick up a reserve ball. And it is definitely not very confident in his hand. Covering the 6-10, and Bo, that has to be a, a marginal thought, there's no question. Well, earlier we asked Steve, what's the change that he had made, the way he drills the balls that were stolen? Well, in order to come up with a more comfortable grip, I've moved the thumb hole uh, in relation to the finger holes. I've moved it an inch offset, and it allows the ball to set in the palm of my hand more and to impart lift easier than I have in the past. And that's an innovation of his uh, mentor and tutor, Billy Walden, from Troy, Missouri, one of the PBA senior champions. Only a second strike now in five frames. George Brennan. Here's the shot of Wonderlich. Wonderlich just solid in the pocket, driving all ten pins straight back. But he has to watch the machine himself. George Branham up there has 14 consecutive strikes here in the championship round. Leads by 44 pins. Fifth frame. There it is, five in a row. And Bo, I know that General Chuck Yeager appreciates this precision because of all the dog fights he was in in P-51s and in the European campaign and then the Southeast Asia and F-4s came back alive. He had a lot of precision too. 
He's watching along with a capacity crowd and all of you. Now the six, six frame, Branham. A four pin for Branham on the left lane, that coming in the sixth. His parents are very happy. Betty and George Branham, the second. You see them there. As you see Branham's ball hitting right in the pocket, the head pin goes to the sideboard, not taking out the four and eight pins. The two pin falls straight back, takes out the eight, leaves an easy spare. So George Branham with 30 strikes thus far, and he is in the championship match against the tournament leader. He's won three by scores of 217, 268, 279. For Wunderlich, the time is now. Early in the match, he must start striking. Sixth frame. Four, six, nine, ten. As you see Wunderlich having trouble with the ball breaking, just too early as it travels down the lane and too sharply, he leaves the three, six, nine, ten, a difficult spare, but Unfortunately, he needed a strike there to really close down this match to make it close. He's had a very difficult spare, uh, almost a wry smile on his face. An ill-fated day so far. He needs something really good to happen to win this match. And that's not it. No. Wife, Sunday. Cindy's so disappointed as you see Wonderlick's ball sliding by a difficult 3 6 9 10 spare has dug himself a hole or a deficit of 65 pins through six frames just cannot control that ball reaction on the lane surface today hey chris i must expand for a second not to take away from george Branham's great performance so far today is it just what makes the a person so unlucky to have his bowling ball stolen like that, or what allows a person the opportunity or the legitimacy to steal somebody's equipment that means so much to his livelihood? It's such a shame. So it's a seven pin for George Branham III of Arletto, California. You know, in 1984, we recall an afternoon in St. Louis when one Nelson Burton Jr. shot 10.50. Well, I'll tell you, Bo. Well, 10.50 for four games. George Branham III had a chance to break that record, Chris, if he could have come up with a 287 this game. Uh, right now, he has a still potential 268. He has just outdistanced his opponents, except for Mike Albee. Albee by 11 pins. 18 pins, Jimmy Certain, 79 over Norm Duke. Big games, now leading by 64. The parents, the proud smile of the mother in the background, Cindy Wonderlake, definitely disappointed, sitting there with the checkered dress on. Oh 31st strike of the afternoon. The methodical George Branham III becomes animated as victory is within his grasp. Three pin for Steve Wonderlich. Now we're just really going through the motions. It's a long afternoon for this young man, the tournament leader. Quickly up on the approach, shooting the three pin, the best Steve can get out of this match would be a 194. Chris, uh, I know this fellow. He's a, he's a very emotional young man. You can almost see the emotion on his face. And when you live, really, or train the Spartan life that he has to become a great professional bowler that he is, this day will return tenfold in his favor. You watch. Mark my words. This man will win a lot of tournaments this year. Just one of the many professionals, Bo, that I've noticed in 25 years now in the 26th. They have such immense pride 
in how they perform, how they show their skills to the television audience, and all week long in the bowling centers wherever we go for these championships. Agree, Chris. And I think it's just as hard on his wife. And really, uh, Cindy is probably wants to win even more than Steve. It's uh, a helpless feeling sitting there watching your husband. Well, it's like the old theme of the show that follows this wide world of sports. Joy of victory and the, the agony. You can underline that. Several lines of defeat. You're right. And following us on Wide World of Sports will be the triathlon as uh, producer Amy Sachs has received among many accolades so far for that production. Well, the two and the sleeper eight. That's the first time he's missed the pocket crisp <laughs> since the first game where he left the two, four, and five pins. The 280 is going through the motions right now with a conversion here and a couple more strikes. He could be in the 240s, but it's very, it's really academic at this point. He is the champion. And that means he adds to his 1986 Brunswick Memorial World Open, getting his first PBA Tour title here in Union City, California. $27,000 for George Branham. Professional Bowlers Tour has been brought to you by AC Delco. Stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco Parts. By Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. And by Firestone. America's home for car service. With over 1,700 locations coast to coast. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car-caring people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. Quaker State I saw this demonstration on TV, but I didn't believe it until I tried it myself. On this side, I feel a tingling sensation with Denerex. Here with Selsun Blue, nothing. The tingle tells me that Denerex is doing more. Both Denerex and regular Selsun Blue have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine many dermatologists recommend. Feels really good. Refreshing. So long, Selsun Blue. Hello, Denerex. Get an extra relief medicine. Get Denerex shampoo or shampoo and conditioner. Watch closely. You're looking at America's two leading premium beers. Because Miller High Life comes in a clear bottle, you probably think it's the lighter of the two. But life is full of surprises. You see, Miller High Life is brewed darker from this special and expensive roasted malt. Pour them for yourself. See the difference roasted malt can make. Then compare the taste, and you just might find out what a beer made the American way is all about. Miller High Life. This is the place you come to for quality and more and prices that are known across the land. The place for Ace Best Buys, like a swing arm lamp for $5.99. Ace is the place. GE two-pack frosted bulbs for 19 cents after rebate, and Ace automatic night lights for $2.99 a pair. Ace is the place with the help of hardware lamps. You will swim. You will bike. You will run. And you will experience the grueling Ironman Triathlon World Championship next. Well, other than a perfect 300 game, George, I'd say you had a perfect afternoon. Yeah, this is great. I'd like to thank AC Delco for sponsoring the tournament. I can't believe this. Two times. How do you suppose those opponents felt? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Let's find out from our tournament leader, Steve Wonderlich. Bo? Thank you, Chris. Uh, with me is not only the man who led the tournament, finished second, uh, a good friend. Steve, it had to be an omen, an ill-fated day when you walked in and their bowling balls were all gone. Well, you know, I, I used one ball uh, every morning of the tournament, and when I walked in this morning, uh, two of my bowling bags were stolen. And that was one of them, and uh, you're right, that didn't start the day off very well, but uh, 
can't use that as an excuse. I had other equipment and I struck a lot in practice and the heads broke down while I was from the time I got done practicing to when I got over here and I didn't make the proper adjustments and George bowled great all day. He deserves it. A true champion sitting next to me. He treated it just like that, Chris. You'll see him many more times in the winner's circle. That's right. I'd like to introduce uh, the, this lineup here. First, Patty Cummings, George's fiance. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Branham II, parents of this champion. And, of course, General Chuck Yeager. P-51 fame, I call it. Kid from Hamlin, West Virginia. And we have Art Schwarzell, who is the general sales manager of AC Delco, our hosts here. This is a magnificent AC Delco trophy. It's got a lot of quality, George. Yeah. But I think you might like to see that piece of paper there. I have a feeling. Art? George, congratulations. And on behalf of General Motors and Service Parts Operations, and all our AC Delco wholesalers and retailers nationwide, we certainly congratulate you, offer you this fine trophy, and especially this check for $27,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, a quick comment here, George. You're winning your second title. Well, I can use a 27000 that's for sure. <laughs> you have to share it with anybody. I share it with my whole family. <laughs> uh, this is great. What's your, uh, what are your plans now? Las Vegas next week? I'm going to Las Vegas. And um, probably in the summer I'm going to get married. I don't know yet. <laughs> you know one thing, you had a great afternoon. 247 average, congratulations. Thank you, A.C. Delco. Chuck, Art, Mom and Dad, Girlfriend. Okay. The Professional Bowlers Tour was produced by Peter Lasser, directed by Larry Camp, technical director Gary Larkins, associate director David Keviat. Now this is Chris Shankel along with Nelson Burton Jr. saying so long from Union City, California. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, experience what it feels, what it feels like to swim, bike, and run over 140 miles in the same day. The Ironman Triathlon World Championship will be featured in a breakthrough television presentation as this grueling endurance event includes the viewer through the micro camera technology. It's all coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the winner, George Branham over Steve Wonderlich.